Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide, the video series I'm putting together that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. In this section of the Absolute Beginner Guide, we're spending a lot of time trying to learn how to use Transex. In the last uh, several videos, we started off by going from the Earth out to the Moon. I think we did that a couple of times. And then we did a return trip. We learned how to use Transex to go from the Moon back to the Earth. Now, it is very important that you have seen those videos so that you have the base familiarity with Transex. We're now going to start learning how to go to the other planets using Transex. But if you don't already have that f uh, fundamental understanding of how to navigate Transex, then this is going to uh, be too difficult for you. Um, I'm making this video with the assumption that you have watched those other videos. So if you just tune into this one and you, you might not be able to follow along because I'm going, you know, again, I'm assuming you saw the other videos, so I'm not going to explain things uh, in, the, in the level of depth that I did uh, when we did those other videos. So we're going to learn how to go to Mars. And um, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and get started. Let me switch camera views here. And uh, once again, we are using the XR2 Ravenstar. Uh, as I stated in one of the previous videos, once you get to a certain level of uh, comfort with Orbiter, you're probably going to find that the standard Delta Glider uh, doesn't really meet your meet your space flight fantasy needs. Um, it's, a, it's a great vessel, but, you know, because it doesn't have locks, because it doesn't have APU and these types of things, it, the simulation can kind of uh, feel a little, a little generic. So the XR2 uh, helps us spice things up a little bit. Now, uh, speaking of the XR2, now if you want to do this with the Delta Glider, by the way, that's absolutely fine. You can use the standard Delta Glider and you can follow along with this and you'll have no problem just when we talk about turning on the APU and doing things like that, then you can just ignore those parts. But one thing to note about the XR2, and this would also apply to the XR5 and other vessels that have locks, is that the default configuration, and that's what we're going to use here, we're not going to get into any kind of fancy, uh, you know, expert mode configurations because this is the absolute beginner guide. But the default configuration, if I press control down arrow, you'll notice that it only has 14 days of locks. And obviously we cannot get to Mars in 14 days, at least not with, not in any sense of that's realistic. So one of the first things we want to do, um, or one of the first things we want to make a note of is that we are going to require more locks than that. So just, just keep that in the back of your mind. And once we get into the actual setup of going to Mars, then we'll determine how much locks we need to carry. But just right from the start, know that you don't want to take off with only 14 days. Okay, now let's uh, go ahead and switch camera, uh, switch cockpit views over to the larger MFDs. And we're going to bring up Transex uh, on both sides like we usually do. And one thing I'll mention is that, uh, and Dimitri kind of pointed this out to me, whenever we plan a flight, we almost always actually start the planning in the middle and then do that and, and then do that part do kind of from the middle forward and then we go back and figure out how to plan the first part i never really gave that a lot of consideration when i'm just going straight from earth to mars but it's actually that's exactly what you do so the first part of the plan that we're going to set up is assuming that we're already in orbit around the earth and then we're going to figure out how do we go from earth orbit technically actually I should say it's it's it, if we're in orbit around the Sun at Earth's position but that's kind of a technicality but basically how do we go from that position to Mars once we know that then we can figure out how to get up off the ground where we're at we're not we're obviously not in orbit around the Earth we're sitting here on the ground but once we figure out how to go from Earth orbit to Mars then we can back up and figure out how we go from the ground to Earth orbit now, uh, again, we're going to move through things uh, without a ton of hand-holding here because I, you know, I spent a lot of time on those last uh, Earth to Moon and Moon to Earth videos, so let's just go through this. Uh, stage one, you should be familiar with what Transex looks like when we're sitting here on the ground on a given body. And just briefly, 
the the gray circle that you see is the is the uh, is Earth. And if we compare quickly to orbit MFD, you know we have uh, the the same radius that's six point three seven one. You see that given here, and the inclination is the same. You know all the stuff that we talked about before. So the default view of transex is kind of just kind of is very similar to what you would see in orbit MFD. Now to set up a flight to Mars, we need to uh, actually escape Earth. So we're going to go plus plus, and then we're going to go to escape. So that's like step one, is to uh, in in stage one view setup set your target to escape. Now you don't you don't target Mars from Earth. Like when we're in when we're going to the Moon, we actually target the Moon directly from Earth, and that's because the Moon is actually in orbit around the Earth. But Mars is not in orbit around the Earth. Mars is in orbit around the Sun. So we actually need to escape Earth completely. We need to get completely away from Earth's gravitational pull. So that's why we choose escape. Now we're going to go forward on this side. And we now have uh, the, the view that we're now looking at. This plus here in the center is the uh, Sun. You can see the major bodies of the Sun. And then this is now the orbital uh, path of the Earth around the Sun. So kind of similar to what we saw when we were sitting there on the Moon. We saw the Earth in the middle. We saw the Moon orbiting around the Earth. Pretty similar to what we had there. But now, now we can choose our target because this this stage now says, uh, you know, we've not, we've escaped the Earth from the previous stage. Now we can actually target where we're wanting to go, and that's going to be Mars. And you just hit plus plus or minus minus until you get the correct. Uh, body and it looks like plus is going to be the fastest way to get there. If we went minus, we would go backwards and through a whole lot of places. So now what we're looking at is the orbit, uh, or rather the sun here in the center. That's still the same. Now this is the orbit of the Earth around the sun, and this outer ring is the orbit of Mars around the sun. Okay, so that's what we're looking at now. So once we have that selected, uh, we're going to press VW to get over to the eject plan. And now, since we're going out away from the Earth, we're going out away from the Sun, we need, to, we need to increase the size of our orbit. We need to raise one side of our orbit, so to speak. Uh, whereas when we were coming back to Earth from the Moon, we needed to lower one side of our orbit. So if we did that here, if we put in you know, negative prograde like we did when we were coming back to the Earth, uh, from the moon, you can see it's actually it's lowering our orbit. This is our our hypothetical orbit. It's getting farther away from Mars, and obviously that's not what we want. So let's uh, go to rough here, and we'll just put in enough prograde velocity to raise our orbital uh, path all the way out to that of Mars. Now this would say this is saying that if we leave Earth uh, here in the next hour or something we're going to do a, a maneuver, a burn, and it's going to take us out here along this hypothetical path out to the orbit of Mars. But there's a problem. We are going to get to... Uh, uh, Mar Mars is actually going to be at this point, and when Mars is at that point, we are going to be over here. So we're going to be missing Mars by 142.9 gigameters. And off the top of my head, I don't even know what that translates into, but it's like 142 billion kilometers or something. So clearly, clearly that solution is not going to work. And what that basically boils down to is timing. We have, uh, I'm recording this video Tuesday, April 8th, 2014, and this date is not a good date to fly to Mars. This is one of the things that makes going to the planets a little bit more inconvenient than simply going back and forth between the Earth and the Moon. When you go back and forth between the Earth and the Moon, you can do that on any day. You don't, you don't have to plan for it necessarily unless you get into some more sophisticated flights. But generally speaking, you can go back and forth between the Earth and the Moon any time you want. So what we have to do now is we have to find a time, a date, uh, you know, a, 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 maybe a month from now or five months from now or a year from now, we don't know. But we need to find a date that will work, that will allow us to leave Earth go out to Mars, uh, go out to the orbit of Mars, and arrive at the same time that Mars is passing that point in its orbit. Now, I'm assuming you've also seen the How to Fix Transex video, and you have the latest and greatest Transex. If you have the latest and greatest Transex, we have a much easier and faster way to solve this problem by using uh, something that Enjo created called Auto Min. And basically what it does 
is it finds the uh, the amount of prograde and the amount of outward uh, and, and plane change if necessary that we will need and it'll find those values automatically hence the name auto min and I believe the min just stands for minimization like find the automatic minimal value that's necessary to get us to that point so the easiest thing to do and what I would recommend for absolute beginners instead of trying to adjust these values manually like this where we're gonna say well you know we need this much prograde and we're gonna come over here to the um, outward and we're gonna put in a bunch of outward and you can see the closest approach is coming down that's that's one way to do it but a better way the preferred way let me reset this with the newer version of transex is to set your value let's start with prograde and let's set it to uh, the auto min so we're gonna say plus there and now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna change the date value uh, for for now we're going to leave outward and we're gonna leave plane change on zero but for now we just want to we just want to set the prograde and we want to start uh, adjusting the date the date value to find a time when we can leave earth and arrive at mars with a reasonable amount of delta v and in a reasonable amount of the time of flight tof stands for time of flight this is how long it's going to take us to go from earth orbit to mars so go to uh it usually helps if you start on the rough setting because we need to adjust the date by several weeks and several months in many cases so set, start with a uh, rough adjustment and just you want to go for you probably want to go forward you can go backwards and find a date that worked in the past but typically i like to go forward uh, if you do prefer to go backwards that's fine you can use the scenario editor and and change your time so that it's in the past but i like to go forward so i'm gonna go forward and what I'm looking for here, number one, we, we need the closest approach to be obviously down, you know, very low. And as a matter of point, right now, in fact, let me actually just find this lowest point real quick so I can... So right, uh, let's back up a little bit more even, get all the way down to the very, very lowest. So right here, in fact, let's do a bit more an adjustment. So if we go forward on this side, we can see, if we look at the encounter, that we are actually uh, hitting Mars uh, on this on this launch date, which is 56742, which is, uh, which is actually just a few days ago. And we, we could do that if we wanted to, but he, one thing you want to look at is notice how this hypothetical line goes out into space way beyond the orbit of Mars then it comes back in that's a really inefficient way to get to mars that means we're using more fuel than we need to to go to go to mars in the first place and then when we start to fall back in our encounter velocity at mars is going to be higher than it needs to be what we really want to see this hypothetical line look like is this let me back up a little bit actually let me just go forward until i find one that looks right and then you'll be able to see the difference but as soon as I see something that looks good, I'll, I'll stop and just let you know. But here you can see now the distance between where we would be here and where Mars is at is way off, so this date clearly isn't going to work. So we're just going to continue going forward until we find a time where things start to line up a little bit better. Just continuing to go forward. And, and also, here's kind of what I'm talking about. Notice how this hypothetical line now comes out here and it's not quite touching Mars that's that's more along the lines of what we want to see now it's just barely touching uh, the orbit of Mars so we're getting pretty close to what may be a solution so let's go to the outward variable and let's set it to automatic let's turn it let's set it to automatic as well and let's set the uh, plane change to automatic now back to the date, and we don't want to do a rough at this point because we're getting, we think we're getting somewhat close to what might be a solution. So let's go down to a medium setting and start using it that way. Uh, as soon as you press plus plus or minus minus, now the other variables start kicking in, and this one's actually maxed out, so we might have to do, we might have to do another adjustment there. But we're just going to uh, continue going forward. Notice the closest approach is coming down and uh, we'll just go for it and this this may work it may not we'll see go go ahead and go to a course setting just go forward a little bit more 
And I mean, this is okay. I don't really like it that much because we are going out farther into space than we really need to. But uh, for the absolute beginner who just kind of wants to get things done, then we can probably go ahead and take this solution. Let's go ahead and do an adjustment down to a medium setting. And now let's just watch the closest approach. Okay, that's that's there. We're there. When you see the number down that low, where you can see now we're we're right there at Mars. So uh, sorry about my square my chair squeaking so much. I really need to get a new one. Okay, now the closest approach is all the way down to 269 kilometers above the center of Mars, which means we're driving more or less straight into the center of it. But in terms of uh, in terms of efficiency, I wouldn't take this flight myself normally. Because you can see down here, the total delta V cost for this flight is 3.5, uh, so 3,500 meters per second. And I know from experience that this is high. Uh, we, can, we can beat that by quite a bit. But for the sake of the absolute beginner guide, I think it's best just to kind of take the first solution that we find that, that works. So, so this, is what we'll, we'll, this is what we'll go with. Now, the next thing we want to do before we do anything else is make a note of this date and it's 57418 and we want to we want to use the scenario editor to move the date close to that number so let's do that we don't want to use time warp because it's way too far out in the future it'll take forever to time warp so go to the scenario editor and then date and put in that number but subtract one day from it and i'll get into explaining a little bit about that in a moment but we want 57417.5, and you don't have to worry about the last decimal points. Then done and close. And I apparently forgot to apply it, so let's try that again. Scenario editor, date, 57, oops, 57417.5, apply. I think I hit now or something. Then done, close. And now you'll note that the closest approach went from 245K to up to 90,000 kilometers. And that always happens when you move the date forward by a lot. And that's exactly what we just did. But with the uh, auto minimization turned on, you know, we've still got outward set to auto min. We've got plane change set to auto min and prograde set to auto min. All we have to do to fix this is just bump the date forward and backward by like just a fraction. It's all the way down to the super setting. That's fine. If we wanted to, we could even go to ultra. And watch what happens just with one click. It went from 90 to, uh, actually it went up. So let's try, let's try a little bit more. So auto minimization just needs to find a, uh, let me go back to uh, fine. It needs to, it needs to work out the algorithm a little bit more. Every time you press plus and minus, that algorithm reruns. And it looks like we need to just go forward a bit more. But it's not changing our date by a lot. You notice we're 57417, and we're just moving it forward by about 24 hours. But we do want to get down to where that closest approach is just, you know, a very, very low number. Unfortunately, it seems to be, actually, it's not increasing our delta V. I thought it was. And there we have it. Now we're hitting Mars again because this number, anytime that number is below 3M, that means you're actually, about 3M, that means you're actually hitting hitting Mars because the radius of Mars is only like 3,000 kilometers. Okay, so there we are. We're right back down into the middle. Um, now, we did move the date forward instead of 24 hours. It's a few days. So let's uh, let's use the scenario editor and get closer to this date. And again, we'll just go one day prior to that. So five, seven, four, two, two, and uh, we don't even need to worry about those decimal points. Apply and done. And now since we only moved the date forward by four or five days, it didn't really change our closest approach at all. So we don't need to worry about, you know, editing this part anymore. Okay, now um, we have figured out how to go from low Earth orbit to Mars, but we still have not yet solved the problem of how to go from where we're at right now, which is uh, sitting on the uh, runway at KSC, into low Earth orbit. But the reason we have to figure out this part first is because this part determines how we're going to get into orbit. Uh, more specifically, it determines the launch heading. 
you know, do we take off and fly at 90 degrees or do we take off and fly at uh, 43 degrees or some other number? We don't know what launch heading we need until we figure this part out. So that's kind of why we start the planning in the middle and work forward and then come back to the beginning and, and figure that out. Now, one other point, uh, time of flight. It's going to take us 179.5 days, so let's say 180 days, to go from low Earth orbit out to Mars. And remember, one of the first things we talked about was that we only have 14 days of locks in the uh, default XR2. So what we need to do here is we need to go up. So from this panel, press control up arrow and then go to the payload camera view. Hopefully that shows up in the playback and click. Uh, the easiest thing to do is to click the payload editor over here. And that brings this up. And there's a way that you can add this to your simulation where you can actually like drive a truck over to your XR2 and unload um, an XR2 um, a LOX module and then have the grapple pick it up. But that's that, I don't really care for that kind of stuff. It's too too much busy work. So for the uh, for the LOX, come down here and we'll start by selecting an XR2 payload LOX half. We'll see if that's enough. If it's enough, then there's no point in carrying a full LOX. So let's choose half and then click on either two or three. It usually makes more sense to put it in number two just for center of gravity purposes, although the XR2 doesn't model that. But if it ever did, then it would make more sense to put it closer to the center of the ship instead of closer to the engines. So now we have a half LOX module in payload number two. Let's see how much LOX that gives us. So control down arrow, down arrow. That gives us 217 days. And how long was our time of flight? Let's check that. It was uh, 179.5, about 180. So with this amount of locks, we have, uh, what is it, 20, almost, uh, thir that's 37 days to spare. That's quite a bit of, that's, that's plenty of excess. We certainly don't need any more than that. So we don't, we don't want to carry a full locks module. Let's see, though what would happen if we said that we did want to carry a full LOX module. So let's go XR2 payload LOX and click that. So if we're carrying a full LOX module, we're going to have 420 days and that's like uh, 240 days of waste. That's a whole lot of mass to carry for no reason. So let's definitely not do that. So let's get rid of that and go to the half LOX, put that in. Now, one other thing I like to do I don't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for the absolute beginner, but you can do this. Uh, notice this, this larger cargo bay slot here. We can't put locks in that and we can't put main fuel in there, but we can put something in there called the, uh, the crew habitat module or CHM. So if you come down here and click on the XR2 payload CHM and then put that there in number one, this has no functionality at all, nothing. It doesn't do anything. All it does is add mass to your, via, to your vessel. Look over here at the ship's mass uh, in kg. When I take this out, notice that the mass dropped by, what is it, 4,000 4, kg. And when I put it back in, we go from 40, whatever the number is, to 44. So it's, it's, a, pretty heavy, it's a pretty heavy object to put in. The, the theory, the idea of the crew habitat module is that it's basically living quarters or maybe science experiments or things like that for the crew. Um, it's, it's more realistic to carry it, but it does add more mass to the vessel, which means it's going, which means you're going to burn more fuel. So for the absolute beginner, if you don't want to carry it, you don't have to just, just don't include it and your vessel will be lighter and you won't burn as much fuel and it kind of, it makes certain things a little bit easier overall. But when you get to a certain level of proficiency, uh, for the sake of realism, you're going to want to always include uh, the CHM. And I'm going to include it in my flight because I've got plenty of time in the XR2. Uh, finally, if we want to see what the, what the load looks like, we can come up to that payload camera view and we can quickly open the payload doors, turn the APU on because it's a moving part. And use a little bit of time warp to speed that up. And take a look at the external view. And that's what we're carrying. We're carrying that LOX module. Now, this LOX module is the same physical size 
as a uh, as the other locks module but it's just half full you know it's like if you can if you measured it like if you had liquid in here it would only come to the center point and then this is the crew habitat module this just gives the crew you know additional living quarters and you can imagine you know if you were in this thing yourself uh, if this was your only living quarter was these seats that would be pretty uncomfortable so it's actually kind of a bit unrealistic in my opinion to imagine 14 people in this thing for for uh, you know 180 days I, it seems awfully cramped but nevertheless we'll give them that additional crew habitat space just so they're not quite so uncomfortable right, let's go ahead and close those doors back up i just wanted to show what that looked like use a little bit of time warp to speed up the animation and turn off the apu Okay, now we are too terribly far away from uh, 30 minute mark, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this part of the video here. And when we come back, we'll talk about the next part of the planning phase, which is to figure out how to go from where we're at right now into low Earth orbit. And just one more time, the, uh, the point of figuring this part out first was so that we could then know what heading to go to. Because if we just, if we just take off and get into orbit right now and fly the runway heading of 330, or if we take off and get into orbit and go to a heading of 90 degrees, uh, right now, this very second, we have no idea if we're going to be in the right orbital plane to go to Mars. We could be, we could be so far off that we would, uh, we would never be able to get there because we, we, would, we could burn all of our fuel just trying to do plane change adjustments, and that wouldn't work. Okay, uh, if you like this part of the video, like it, and if you didn't like it, hit the uh, thumbs down link, that's no problem. More importantly, leave comments down below in the uh, comments area. If you have questions of, uh, specific to this video, uh, please leave those questions below. I answer every question that's uh, given to me. And check for links in the description of this video, and I will see you in the next part.